Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Wisecam version 3. This is the latest iteration of a very popular and very affordable security camera system. And this one brings some new improvements, including the ability to work outside because this one is relatively weatherproof. And we're going to explore what this new camera is all about and how it's a little bit better than the version 2 in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from WISE. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this camera is all about. Now, the price point on this is very reasonable. It's about $30 delivered. Like the other WISE cameras, this does not require a base station. It will connect directly to your Wi-Fi with no other equipment required. So you buy the camera, you download the free app, and you're off and running. And you can actually use it for free without a subscription, but there is a subscription plan that enhances some of the features, and I'll step through uh, some of those things in a few minutes. Now, this one, as I mentioned, is weatherproof. They have an IP65 rating on it. Uh, what that means is that you can splash it with water, get it rained on, but it's not designed to be immersed in the water. And an important note here is that the power adapter that it uses, which just is a standard USB power adapter here, is not rated for outdoor use. So you have to get the cable snaked inside your house in order for it to work. And they do give you a nice long cable in the box, but you might need a longer one if you need to go a further distance. And the connector here to power it has a little gasket on there that seals around the cable here to keep everything watertight. Uh, so again, it's not going to be suited for underwater, uh, but you can place it outside without an enclosure and it should do okay in stormy weather and snowstorms and that sort of thing. Now, when you're out shopping, you will undoubtedly also encounter the version 2 camera. They often bundle this in a lot of different configurations. And there are some key differences here between the two beyond the weatherproofing. Uh, the version 3 camera has much better visual quality, especially at night. And you'll see some examples of the different night vision modes that it has as we work our way further into the review. It has a wider field of view, about 130 degrees versus 110 on the old one. Uh, so you'll get a little bit more of a wider coverage area of its imagery. It also has a higher frame rate, 20 frames per second during the day at 1080p versus 15 on the old camera. At night, it'll do 15 frames per second versus 10 on the old camera. So you'll get just overall better image quality out of this one. It has a siren that's built in, so you can have it sound an alarm either manually or through some rules that you set up and a couple of other creature comforts that the old one doesn't have. But the old one has something the new one doesn't have, which is a uh, docking port here for the Wise Sense base station. And if you don't know what Wise Sense is, we reviewed it a few months ago. It's a really cool product that incorporates contact sensors and uh, infrared motion detectors into the Wise system. And those little sensors communicate with the base station here that you plug into the back of their uh, version 2 camera or their uh, pan and tilt camera and just plugs in like that and it will connect up with those sensors. This version 3 camera doesn't have a USB port for that at all. So I would suggest if you are looking to get a lot of wise stuff, uh, maybe buy one or two of the version 2 cameras, if for nothing else, to have the uh, spot here for the Wise Sense base station so you can use those products, which can be really useful for monitoring your home. Now, the build quality is not going to knock your socks off. It is an inexpensive camera after all, but it's adequate, I think, for the price point. Like the version 2 camera, it's got a nice little pedestal that it sits on here, so you have a little bit of adjustability. Uh, you cannot remotely change the position of the camera on this model. Their pan cam will let you do that. Uh, so this one, you basically get it into the position that you want it to be in and then uh, come back and move it again if you need to. Uh, you can mount it upside down. There is an, a, a flip over feature in their software. Uh, you can wall mount it in a couple of different ways. They even have a magnet built into the base here so you can just attach it to a refrigerator or something metal. Uh, they also give you a little metal disc that you can attach to a wall or something that you want to have the camera attached to and get it connected up that way. On the bottom here, you have an SD card slot. And one of the cool features of Wise Cams, even going back to their originals here, is that you can record continuously onto the SD card that you have installed on the camera. I'll show you how to browse that footage in a few minutes. 
So you can record every minute of the day if you want or have it just archive the motion events that it detects. Either way, it's nice to see that on a low-cost product like this. And the ability to browse that footage is very nicely integrated into their app, so you don't have to pull the card out all that often. Now, the way it will work on continuous recording is that if you fill up the card, it will go back to the oldest recording and then erase the oldest one. Uh, so just uh, be advised that you'll need to jump in every week or two and grab the footage that uh, you want to pull off and save permanently. Uh, they say that you can only use a 32 gigabyte card in this, although I've seen some folks on some of the wise reddits using larger cards, but you might have to do some special configuration on those cards to get it to work. And of course, WISE offers their own SD card, but I would recommend getting one of the uh, long duration, high endurance cards that are designed to work in cameras like this. They're not all that much more expensive. Uh, there's a button here for setup. We did a setup video on uh, my other channel a few days ago, so you can check that out. And that's pretty much it for the hardware. Not much to see here because it's all uh, self-contained inside the unit. But let's plug this thing in now and boot up the app and see how it works. All right, so we've got the camera plugged in and the app booted up. And what I'm going to do is just tap on the uh, camera on my list of WISE devices. And you'll see that we've got a real-time view of the camera. If I had my speaker turned up right now, you would hear the audio coming back from the microphone as well. And if you're curious as to what that audio sounds like, here's a recording I did a little bit earlier. This is on its strongest setting for night vision. I think it looks pretty good. I think you can make out my face here. You can see what the camera sounds like. I'm going to step through the app now and change some of these settings and see what it will look like if we adjust things differently. Now you have a few controls here underneath the image. The first one is the sound button here. That just turns off the sound coming through the app, but it will still record audio locally and uh, through the event notification system. Uh, if you hit record here, you can force a recording. So if you're using the SD card continuous recording feature, this might be a little redundant, but if you're not, you can pop in and just record something that the camera happens to be looking at while you're logged into the app here. Uh, next to this is the speak button that enables two-way communication. Uh, the speaker on this isn't bad. You can probably have a decent conversation with somebody who's at your door and you can do it uh, naturally without having to do the CB radio thing. Let's take a look and see what it sounds like when you're listening to the camera. Hey, get out of here. We don't want any. Get off my porch. Now the next one here is self-explanatory. That is the photo button. You can just grab a still shot anytime you push that. If you hit more here, you've got a few other options, including the album for where those photos and recordings get stored. Uh, you have the ability to set up time lapses. So if you wanted to do a cool thing of a winter storm or something, you could set that up in there. Uh, the siren here is unique to the version 3 camera, I believe, and that will uh, make a pretty decent siren sound here. You can tie this in with some of the rules uh, so that you could have it sound an alarm when some sensor in your house gets tripped. So you can do a lot with that beyond just uh, getting it going manually. And then, of course, you can turn the camera off here by going to turn off. Now, if you have that SD card installed and are using the continuous recording feature, you can go back and look at all of the footage that has been previously recorded here by clicking on the View Playback button. And there is a calendar option on here. If you tap below that timeline, you could jump to any day and then browse through any portion of the day uh, just by scrubbing this left and right here. You can also go to the uh, last period of recording there and then just scrub to what you want to see. And what's nice about this is that if you did get a notification about something happening, uh, you can get the context of what happened before and after because in continuous recording mode, it is recording every second of the day. So it's not going to miss anything, even if a notification didn't get it at the right time. Now, if you hit the gear icon here in the upper right-hand portion of the screen, you can configure all of the specifics about the camera here. Event recording is an important one because even if you're doing continuous recording, you'll probably want to send the events up to the cloud as well. So I've got mine right now set up to detect motion and record that motion event and push it up to the WISE cloud. So I've got an offsite copy of it. You can also set it to record when it hears a sound and you can set some of the sensitivity as to what kind of motion and what kind of sound will get it going. And then you also have the ability to set a detection zone. Now the detection zone will look for motion in a specific region of the image and ignore everything else. So right now I've got this box drawn on the right side of the screen and it's going to look for motion only over here 
and not where I am right now because as you can see, I am out of the detection zone. I would have liked for this to have a little bit more granularity to it because maybe you want uh, some portions of the screen and not the other. So for example, if you wanted to ignore the middle of the image and only look for things on the left and the right, you really can't do that here. There's no way of layering on these detection zones, unfortunately. And you've got a few other options to configure in here, including the alarm settings where it will listen for smoke alarms or CO2 detectors so that you know something's going off in the house. That might be useful for ignoring the air conditioner, but picking up something louder than that. Uh, you also have in the advanced settings here the ability to configure how the SD card works. You can also format it from here as well. Again, I've got mine set to continuous recording, but you could also have it just record the motion events that it picks up to the card. Uh, the night vision mode is something that we'll spend some time on here because there are a lot of different night vision options on this camera. This is the image we saw a little bit earlier. This is me in my basement in total dark conditions. I just had the infrared lights on the front of the camera illuminating me really good here. You can identify somebody in the image, a lot of detail here. Uh, that flashing is my phone screen turning on. Uh, before the phone screen turned on, there was no light in this room at all, and it was able to pick up uh, pretty identifiable features quite nicely here for a low-end camera. That was impressive. Now, this is with the night vision off, and this scene was really dark. We did have some light from a street lamp across the street. You can see the TV illuminating the light out of the window there on the left, but if you were standing there, you would not see any of this. It was super, super dark, and it's able to make a lot of use out of what ambient light is there. It is very noisy, of course, and you'll see me walk in front of the camera here in a minute, and unfortunately, you can't really make out any features because I am just kind of masked by all the noise here. In fact, the AI from the Y system didn't find me at all. I think it did detect a motion event. You saw that box light up there briefly, but I could probably get away with something uh, just given the fact that my motion was very hard to make out with all the noise that the sensor was picking up. Now what you'll see here now, right here, uh, is the infrared mode getting activated. So that is the far mode uh, with night vision set to on. And this is probably what you would want to use on a porch like this, because if somebody were to step up on the porch, you'd be able to identify them a lot better. Um, so that is the far mode with the night vision on. Uh, what you'll see here is the image progresses as me stepping through some of the other settings here. So you'll see that image dim a little bit. That was going into the uh, near mode. Not much of a difference outdoors, but if you're inside and you're getting a lot of reflection, then that might be something to adjust. Now this is with the night vision on, but all the infrared lights off. And as you can see, it works very similarly to the mode we saw earlier with color, but it's picking up just the infrared light. But if you don't have a lot of ambient light, you're not gonna have a good image. So here I am turning off my phone screen with the IR off. And as you can see, you can't see anything. So I think that infrared is going to be really important still, even if you can get a passable image in the evening, because it really does illuminate quite nicely, a pretty good distance away from the camera. Uh, one thing to note is that if you are putting the camera inside a window, uh, this mode with the IR off is probably the way you'll want to go. And the reason is, is that those IR lights will reflect off the glass back into the camera. Uh, so if you're going to use the IR, you're gonna want this camera outside uh, if you are monitoring outdoor locations for the best results. Now, one of the things I've liked about the WISE cameras over the years is that they worked without a subscription fee. In fact, they never had a subscription program until recently, uh, but now they have something and they're going to be badgering you quite a bit over your first two weeks of ownership. And the reason is, is that you get a free trial of the Cam Plus subscription when you hook the camera up. You don't need a credit card for it, you're going to just have it, but until you decide to subscribe or not, you're going to be seeing this dialogue popping up quite a bit on your phone to tell you what you get with it uh, that is not included in the main plan. It's not all that expensive. It's about $1.25 per camera if you do an annual plan. What I like about the way they handle the subscription is that you don't have to apply it to every camera. You can pick and choose which cameras get the Cam Plus. So if you have a bunch of these things but don't need it on every camera, you don't have to pay for every camera. So there's a little bit of flexibility there. Now what the subscription gets you is unlimited video length recording in the cloud. 
Uh, by default, without the subscription, it's only 12 seconds. And another feature is that there's no cool down period on the subscription plan between notifications. So on the non-subscription plan, if the camera detects something, you get pushed to the notification, the 12 seconds go up to the cloud, but it waits five minutes before it does another one. So if you've got somebody rummaging around your house, you're gonna miss a good chunk of what happened. Uh, so on the Cam Plus, it'll just keep going until that motion ends. Now the video in the cloud under both plans is only stored for about 14 days. So you'll definitely want to download the images onto your mobile device uh, as soon as you see them and want to preserve them because there is a 14 day expiration on everything, subscription or not. Now another feature that you get as part of the subscription plan are AI driven alerts. Now without the subscription, if you go to your events tab here, uh, you will get a list of everything that happened in front of any one of your WISE cameras throughout the course of the day. And that's basically any kind of motion or sound event that triggered the camera to record and send something up to the cloud. And without the subscription, I've got those 12 second clips that are spaced five minutes apart basically because of that cool down period. I can go and watch the clip from the cloud, no problem pretty easy to browse around. But if you look at yesterday and today, I've got a lot of stuff that triggered the camera here and I may not want to see every single one of these things. So if I go over to the filters here at the top and tap on person, first of all, I'll get nagged to pay them to continue the subscription after my trial. I'm gonna turn that off. You're gonna see that a lot. And we're going to turn motion off here. And now I just have the AI detection events. And this first one here I thought was pretty neat because this was something I wasn't planning on as I was demoing uh, the camera, but my uh, delivery guy brought some food to the house last night for dinner. And as you can see, it picked him up as a person. Uh, but if I go back here to the uh, list, it also shows that it discovered a package in the video as well. So basically saw in its AI the pattern of somebody coming to the door and dropping off a package and walking away. And that's one of the things that it's now detecting are packages and people. I believe it's doing vehicles now as well. And I guess soon they're going to be doing pets and other animals too, if you want that as an option. Uh, so it's pretty neat how it works. Now these AI driven alerts when they happen uh, are delayed a bit because the camera has to see the event, record it, push it up to the cloud, and then their servers have to do the analysis. It's not happening on the camera itself. And so there is a bit of a delay before you get these pushed back down to you. Um, but they can be useful, especially if your camera's picking up a lot of motion throughout the day. At a minimum, you can pull out just the clips that have people in them. But again, you need the subscription to do that. I found the AI insofar as detecting people is pretty good. The package detection is still a work in progress, I think. So for example, uh, here it picked me up as a person uh, dropping off a package in front of the camera but it did not detect me dropping the package. It just saw me and didn't really notice that a box was left. So the package thing I wouldn't rely on so much. The people one has been working pretty decently. Now the Wise products will work with Amazon Alexa and the Google Assistant. Uh, you can use things like your Android TV to pull up an image from uh, the camera anytime you want. I also got it to work with a Google Home. Uh, you can do the same with an Echo Show or with a Fire TV, for example. And you can also integrate these products into all of the different rule sets that you can set up with Google or Amazon. Uh, you can also use IFTTT, but you cannot use Apple HomeKit at the moment. It'd be great to have that integrated, but right now it's just Amazon, Google, and IFTTT. And then if you have a lot of WISE products like I do, uh, you can also integrate your WISE products together through their app. They've got a lot of rules that you can set up and that feature is kind of buried here. You have to go to the plus icon here and add a rule and you can have different device triggers go off here. So for example, I could have the uh, living room camera uh, trigger lights to go on when it detects motion and then have them turn the lights back off when the motion goes away. There's a lot that you can do with this. Uh, those little wise sensors we talked about earlier can be a lot of fun to work with here as well. And you can spend a lot of time having different things trigger off of what the camera might pick up. Now I know a lot of you are using wise cameras with your home security DVR systems. The version two camera here has a special firmware from wise that allows you to use the RTSP protocol. Uh, this camera does not yet support that at the time I'm recording this video, but I do believe it's a feature that they have planned in the future. They said they will be looking at doing that. But right now, if you want RTSP, version 2 is probably the way to go. But overall, I think it's a nice improvement. The visual quality is better. You've got a better field of view. 
Uh, daytime doesn't look all that much better, but you are getting slightly better frame rates, so that is a good thing. Uh, but overall, for the price point, you really can't beat these cameras. They're very flexible, and if you don't want to pay the subscription, you still have a very usable product, especially if you have an SD card installed on it. So I remain uh, very positive about these things because they are exactly what they say they are. They're not the best, uh, but they are very consistent, and what they offer for the price point, I think, is an exceptional value especially if you have a lot of places you want to monitor. You can buy these cameras uh, for very little money and get going without a lot of complexity. Uh, the USB power will probably be a bit of a challenge for some of you to get everything hooked up the right way for outdoor usage, but I think that something like power over Ethernet would have just cost too much and driven this well beyond the price point that they were trying to hit. But the good news is, is that if you can get it outside and keep that power cable uh, going into your home, uh, you should be able to use this outdoors now without any additional accessories. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Steven Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.